everyone, my name is Madison and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm so excited to be doing an aerospace engineering Q&A with you all. If y'all did not know, which I've said it a bajillion times, so I sound like a broken record, but I'm studying aerospace engineering, which I feel like is a bit of a unique and niche, very niche, um, university major, especially engineering major. You definitely narrow yourself down to a certain path. And I know quite a few of my viewers are interested in studying aerospace engineering um, or something along those lines and are always asking me questions. So um, I've been kind of collecting some questions that y'all have asked me in the past that I frequently get asked um, and thought I would talk to y'all about what my experience has been and how I would respond to these questions. Just for a little bit of context to start y'all off, um, I will be a junior this upcoming semester. I do plan to go on and get my master's in aerospace engineering. I want to go into fluids um, and more specifically aerodynamics. I am minoring in computer science, technically have the double major declared, but I know deep down that I'm just going to go through with the minor. Um, I have declared two different types of double majors and drop them, um, declare like seven different minors and drop them. So I am very familiar with that whole process. I work two jobs. I work in an aerospace lab and I work in the aerospace engineering admin office. Um, I'm in all sorts of different clubs and things. I'm in a robotics club, I'm in the cybersecurity club, and I really want to join the Formula SAE team, but I don't know if I'm going to make it. So we'll see. I will keep y'all posted on that. But regardless, I feel like I'm pretty busy. I've said this before, busy is relative. Do not push yourself beyond your limits. I feel like I do a little bit um, and I don't really think that's healthy. So find a balance. Busy to you will mean something very different than what busy to someone else means. So with that being said, let's get started. Uh, just because I know that my experiences and things and what I wanna go into will definitely influence how I answer these questions. One of the first questions I always get asked is what minors go with the aerospace engineering degree major? Now, it is completely up to you. There are definitely a few more common ones, some more stereotypical than others, some more useful than others, but you can do anything. Um, when I first think aerospace engineering, a lot of my peers are doing either ATOC, which is Atmospheric Sciences and Oceanography minors, or they're doing Space or Astronomy. I have mixed feelings on these. I think they are really cool minors. I think they can be a lot of fun. I think a lot of people do go to use them, but I also have seen a lot of people get the minor and never use it. And that's fine. If you are simply getting it because you're interested in it and you want to learn more about astronomy, space, oceanography, whatever, go for it. Do it. But those are less skill-based um, than something like computer science or another engineering minor might be. So um, getting another engineering minor or computer science minor might teach you a skill, teach you something more technical, something you can actually be hired to do. Where a space minor might just be something that, ooh, cool, you know a lot about space, but you couldn't go code a program for them, if that makes sense. So I think those are the two main ones that people either go towards more of the science-y, oceanography, space, atmospheric science, that sort of thing, if that's what they're interested in, um, and they want to go into that type of aerospace sector, or something a bit more technical, um, more skill-based like computer science, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, um, systems engineering, something like that. I definitely think your minor should be based on what you're interested in. Your aerospace engineering classes and the major will be very, very, very hard. You are not going to love every second of it. It will probably be the hardest four years of your life. So make sure your minor is something that you're actually interested in. Um, and the classes, hopefully there are classes that you're actually looking forward to taking. That being said, I do have a few friends doing minors in Russian, Spanish, um, entrepreneurship, business, what else, engineering management, leadership, those sorts of things. And those are great too. Again, do what you're interested in. If you feel like you're going to use a Russian minor, go for it. If you want to go work in Russia or do something like that, go for it. If you think that having a leadership minor sounds really, really cool and those classes are interesting to you, awesome. That'll be useful in the workforce eventually. Um, if you want to go start a business, do entrepreneurship. You can literally do anything with aerospace. Some might be a bit more applicable than others. 
Um, in my opinion, the most beneficial minors in aerospace engineering would be computer science and then something like electrical engineering or computer engineering, um, depending on what you want to go into. If you can show up to an aerospace company and be like, hey, yo, I can code. I know my whatever program, whether you're really good at JavaScript, whether you know assembly really well, um, computer systems, whatever you know, if you can show up with a bit more of a hireable skill, that'll automatically stay, make you stand out a little bit more, just because they're kind of killing two birds with one stone at that point. Um, if you want to go into manufacturing or something like that, maybe go for a manufacturing engineering minor. Again, do what you're interested in. If you don't know what to do, I would highly suggest either going towards the route of something you simply are just doing because it sounds cool and interesting and it's fun, like maybe space, or something a bit more hireable and technical and more skill-based, like engineering or computer science. Just keep in mind, typically the more skill-based technical engineering type minors will be a bit more work than the other ones, just because you will still be expected to do tons of labs, tons of homework assignments on top of your other classes, where the more science-y ones might just give you a homework assignment or a reading assignment every once in a while. Keep that in mind. Number two is what is the workload like? Now this is a very relative term. Workload comes down to three main things, and that is the number of credits you came in and what credits you came in with, um, what minors, certificates, anything like that that you might be getting, um, and then also what university you're going to. Every university is going to require different aerospace engineering classes, um, they're going to require different numbers of professional area electives, things like that. Again, first semester of my first year, 14 credits was four classes. I took 18 credits, which was five classes I want to say. Um, second, first semester sophomore year my 18 credits was also five credits and then this past semester 14 credits was only three classes which means each class was a lot more credit hours which means each class had a lot a lot of lab. Um, on top of that like I said I am getting the computer science minor which is definitely not an easy minor. I will fully admit I have considered dropping it quite a few times but I'm so close to finishing it that I'm like I'm just gonna tough it out and stick it out because I'm so close to being done with it but it is a lot of work so many extra labs on things I'm not really interested in at all like computer systems was one of the worst classes I've ever taken I think it'd be interesting if I was interested in how a computer works but I'm really not. I'm interested in like cybersecurity and I'm interested in that sort of thing as opposed to like the assembly code and like optimizing your code for like speed and storage and stuff like that. Like just not overly interesting to me regardless. Um, so while my workload has fluctuated between all of those different semesters, 14, 18, 18, and 14 credits, and then this next semester I have five classes, which is 15 credits. 15 credits doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, when there are aero classes and computer science classes that are considered the weed out classes, they will feel like a lot. And typically the aerospace engineering students are also the ones that are wanting to get jobs or multiple jobs, work in labs, they're in a lot of clubs, maybe they're volunteering, um, those sorts of things. Every once in a while you might find an aero kid that um, maybe doesn't spread themselves quite as thin, but those kids are few and far between. Number three is what classes do you take? Um, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to kind of generalize, and again, I'm only speaking about CU Boulder. Um, every kid in Arrow has to take Calc 1, 2, 3, Diff EQ, Physics 1 and 2. We also have to take like a general um, freshman projects class, a general computer science um, like programming class. We have three different versions of aerodynamics, so we have to take two different versions of thermodynamics, multiple dynamics, orbital mechanics, aircraft dynamics, those sorts of classes, um, multiple statics and structures classes, um, electronics, and then you take propulsion, you have a senior projects class, you need 15 professional area electives, which are things like computer science classes, maybe you're doing like an electrical engineering minor or something like that. Um, those classes would most likely count for your professional area electives, 
and then you also have to take specific humanities classes um, that kind of relate to engineering. They don't have to, but you do have to take like a writing course. Number four is are there a lot of work opportunities? Now, I hate that word. I'm gonna be honest with you. I hate the word opportunities. Yes, CU Boulder and the state of Colorado in Boulder is a very large hub for aerospace engineering, but nobody will ever come to you and say, hey, do you want this job? You need to be the one seeking those opportunities, seeking those chances to go work. So you need to make your own opportunities is kind of what I'm saying. Um, yes, there are a lot of work opportunities out here, but again, nobody will ever come to you. You need to be the one seeking out those opportunities. I'll have friends saying things like, I just can't find a job, I really want a job, but nobody's hiring, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, if you think nobody's hiring and you think you can't find a job, you're not looking hard enough. You're not trying hard enough. Um, I truly believe that if you want something, you need to work for it and you need to go out and find it yourself. So yes, there are lots of work opportunities out here and I'm sure at a lot of established universities that have aerospace engineering, there will be too. Um, work opportunities in your field might be a little bit different. I really want to go into aerodynamics and fluids, like I've said, which as an undergrad is a very hard thing to get into. Um, and CU Boulder especially is very well known for their space research and their astronautics research as opposed to their aeronautics research. Um, so our Earth Space Engineering building and its research mostly pertains to everything out of the atmosphere while I want to do things more inside the atmosphere, which greatly limits um, the po potential labs I want to work for in the Earth Space Engineering department. Luckily, I found one that I love and that I'm having a great time at and learning a lot at, but um, again, work opportunities, yeah, it might not 110% align with everything you want to be doing, but nobody's going to come to you. You will be the one, you need to be the one to go out there and find those opportunities for yourself because they do exist, you just need to be willing to find them. Next up, I get this question a lot and that is, what is the hardest weed out class? Um, this goes differently for everybody, so I'm going to speak on my own behalf and statistically a little bit. Um, the few main places students get weeded out in the aerospace engineering curriculum at the university that I attend are either in the applied math calc classes that you have to take. Calc 2 and 3 in particular are typically the two hardest um, that kids either fail out or just realize this stuff is way too hard, there's no way I could apply this to an engineering class. So they might not necessarily like completely fail out of the class, but oftentimes it's what convinces them, hey, maybe this isn't what I want to be doing. Sophomore year at this university is typically known as your weed out year. Um, junior year apparently is quite a bit harder just because you're taking six aerospace classes instead of five. Um, and there are four, all four credits instead of ranging between two and five credits. Um, that being said, if you can survive your sophomore year, apparently you'll be fine. Again, I haven't taken any junior level classes yet, so we'll see. But um, that being said, first semester, sophomore year, intro to thermo and aerodynamics is typically what is known as the weed out class. Um, once you get into the aerospace curriculum, if you get weeded out, it's typically because you genuinely failed the aerospace exam curriculum or protocol for the class, words, <laughs> at CU, you need at least a 73% exam average on your aerospace exams to pass the class. So even if you have 100% in your labs and you get a 71% on your exam average, you will fail the class, which is just so fun. So typically students kind of get slapped in the face when they realize they have to study a lot more than they originally thought they did, um, or they're not putting in enough work, something like that, um, to the point where they fail out of the class. Again, this stuff is doable, it is challenging, it is not easy, but it's not impossible. If you are willing to put in the time and energy and effort, you'll do fine. Um, you just need to be prepared to really, really work for it. So intro to thermo and aero, first semester, sophomore year is one of the biggest ones. If you make it past that, then typically dynamics and control systems second semester sophomore year also gets a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Um, same thing, that exam average is incredibly hard to hit and 
Um, yes, it'll be a lot easier in some of your classes than others, but every once in a while you're gonna have a class where you are a little too close to that exam average for comfort. Um, so control or dynamics and control systems is very challenging in that sense. Um, and then another big thing that weeds kids out, and this is really unfortunate, is um, the honor code. So a lot of students, because of how challenging the curriculum is, will cheat their way through these classes. They get caught, they fail the class, and they get weeded out. Um, do not violate the honor code. It is not worth it. If you need to violate the honor code, you are not working hard enough. I'm going to straight up say that. Um, if the only way you're going to pass a class is by cheating, you are not studying enough. You are not putting enough time and energy into that class because these classes are not made to be failed. They are made to test you and test your work ethic. Um, the thing about CU Boulder's aerospace curriculum is especially sophomore year, if you fail any one of those classes, you have to wait to take it an entire year, which means you are automatically put on a five-year track. So yes, yeah, so you may fail a class, um, and while some majors that just might mean you need to add an extra semester, or you'll have a busier semester, but you'll still graduate in four years, at CU, 99% of the time, that means you're on a five-year track, which is what weeds kids out because they rightfully so, don't want to pay tuition for five years to do this, so there's that. I've also heard the question, what can you do in your free time to get closer to being an aerospace engineering major? Um, and I think that is totally up to you. You shouldn't feel like you need to be doing all this extra aerospace stuff um, to get to becoming an aerospace engineering major, but if you want to, go for it. Nobody's gonna stop you, but you really don't need to do anything um, if you really are wanting to do something aerospace related in your free time. I would highly recommend joining a robotics club, joining like um, a submarine competition team, do something with planes, build rockets, something like that to just help you realize what area you really are interested in. Maybe you're interested in rockets, maybe you're interested in satellites, maybe you want to go work on boats and submarines and things like that, or cars, um, really try to figure out what area you want to go into, and then once you figure, oh hey, I like rockets or I like planes, once you've kind of distinguished between astro and aero, you can go um, and figure out more about if you want to do autonomous systems within that, if you want to do fluids, if you want to do structures, something like that. But start broad, just try to figure out what you're excited about. Um, tinker with things you could I've had so many friends build little mini robotic submarines friends build drones in their free time just things like that just to um, get better working with their hands you can learn so much about electrical systems and pin loops and structures and things like that just by building things and tinkering on your own so um, I would just recommend just find anything find anything that sounds cool whether you want to read a cool textbook on it um, when you build something, join a club, something like that. Just do something to try to figure out that this is really what you want to be doing. What foreign languages should I know to be in aerospace? Um, I'm going to have a very probably wrong answer to this because I am a white female American living in America and most likely wanting to work in America. Maybe not, kind of depends. Um, in which case, I really only need to know English. However, if you are an international student um, or you live outside of the US, obviously probably knowing whatever language your country speaks would be helpful and probably English just because um, the US is the biggest aerospace hub or I don't know about Russia, but I don't really know if you can go work in Russia. Aside from that, <laughs> the US is the biggest aerospace hub. Um, and if you are ever wanting to work in America, knowing English will be a necessity. That being said, if you don't want to, if you want to go work out of the country, knowing um, any European language could be really helpful. I, at one point, knew Spanish pretty well. I don't really think I do anymore, but um, I got AP Spanish credit, so couldn't have been that bad. But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say there's really any, any requirement, just keep in mind where you're trying to work and where that um, company, company is located or what country you're trying to work in. Just figure out whatever that language is and I'm sure that'd be helpful. <clears throat> is aerospace hard? Um, 
Y'all also probably know how I feel about this question just because I feel like the word hard is relative. Um, in no way will it be easy. No one will ever tell you that was a walk in the park. I had all this free time. I never had to study anything like that. And if they tell you that, they are probably lying because this is considered one of the hardest majors for a reason. It has one of the highest dropout rates at my university for a reason. Um, and yes, maybe it is hard to some people, but I would not call it but it's not impossible. How about that? Like, it will be challenging. You will have to work for it, but it is not impossible. It is completely doable if you are willing to put in the time and energy, give up some free time, give up some of your social life. But if it's really what you're interested in and really what you see yourself doing with your life, um, you will get it done. Again, not going to be easy, but it's not impossible. It just all depends on how much work and effort you're willing to put into the major. Another question I get is why do so many people drop out and fail out? Um, first and foremost, classes are hard, like I mentioned earlier, that there is that exam percentage threshold that you need to pass in order to continue with the major and continue taking courses. Um, I think a lot of kids either A, just aren't really interested in some of the classes, which is maybe why they study less, maybe they think they don't need to be studying as much as they should be. Um, People just have bad exams. You could be doing really, really well in the first three exams and that final could just hit you like a truck, which is really unfortunate, but that does happen. Um, another thing is, um, I think people drop out a lot of the times because it is so niche. If you truly are not interested in planes and rockets and satellites and cars, that sort of thing, you are probably not in the right major. Um, go do something a little bit more broad like mechanical engineering where you can get a very much more wide variety a much more broad education on mechanical engineering in general versus only narrowing yourself down to propulsion thermodynamics aerodynamics um those sorts of classes dynamics if you don't like dynamics and like aircraft dynamics orbital mechanics that sort of thing and then aerodynamics you are probably going to hate this major um, so I think some people just realize this isn't for them. Uh, they don't want to do something so specific, um, which is totally fine. Um, another thing is, I mentioned this earlier, and this is really unfortunate. Um, people will feel the need to supplement their lack of studying um, and preparation with violating the honor code, which is things like cheating on an exam, talking to your friend during an exam, um, those sorts of things, notes, textbooks on exams, those are the general ones. Um, you might plagiarize a lab report or something like that because you didn't, I don't know, you didn't do the assignment early enough and you procrastinated and now you're scrambling to finish it and you found someone else's answers online, that sort of thing. Um, please do not violate the honor code, do your work honestly, it is the lamest way to fail out in my opinion if you're gonna fail out go out trying go out truly giving it your best shot um not violating the honor code um i don't want to sound rude when i say all of that i just frankly believe that if you feel the need that cheating is your only way to pass the class, you're not trying hard enough, you're not putting in enough study hours, you're not going to office hours, you're not reading your textbook, and I in no way have perfect grades. I by no means have great grades, I by no means will be top of the class, I by no means will be the person that people go to when they need help on a homework assignment or something like that, but I do pride myself in knowing that I am willing to go the extra mile um, to hopefully do just a little bit better on an exam. Um, I have to give up a lot. I I think everyone does. If you're willing to pursue this major and you're willing to do well in it, um, you're going to have to make some sacrifices just like everyone else. And last but not least, this video is getting so long, um, I often get questions about social life. Now, this means something different for everybody, so I'm going to kind of explain my stance. Um, how much of a social life you want to have and you're going to have depends on what grades you're shooting for, what minors you're taking or getting, what certificates you might be getting, um, if there are any other classes you're taking outside of the major. 
if you're willing to spend five or six years getting this degree so you're not taking those 18 19 credit credit semesters that'll impact how much free time and social life you have um it also comes down to jobs things like that if you want a job or two i work 25 hours a week during the school year um and then also clubs if you want to be in the robotics club and be the president one day you're gonna need to work for that but if you're just not interested in that awesome you do you um i'm not here to judge i think everybody needs to follow their own path and do what actually interests them outside of their major because this major is so draining it is really important to find other things outside of your schoolwork that actually interest you so that being said your social life will greatly depend on that um again I do not want to sound cocky when I say this. I'm simply stating how I spend my time. And here we go. Um, this past semester, I took 14 credits. I had 10 hours of lab a week. I had lecture for three, six, nine hours a week. Um, so there, that's 19 hours of class I had every week, which was only giving me 14 credits. Um, outside of that, I probably studied two, maybe three to five hours every day, at least on the weekends, up to eight hours a day. Um, I worked 25 hours a week, so I was working almost every waking minute between eight and five. I was either in class doing homework or at work. Um, and then on top of that, last semester, I was heavily involved in our C Robo Sub team, which was a seven hour a week commitment. And then I let myself go to the barn once a week on Tuesdays, which was like my happy place. Um, that being said, I'd say I was probably busy from 8 a.m. to about 8 p.m. Monday to Friday at least. Sometimes we'd have RoboSub until like 9 or so. Is that right? Something like that. Um, and then on the weekends, I would say normally I was busy from about 9 to 5 five nine to four if i was lucky doing homework um and clubs and things like that so that being said that kind of pretty much only gave me after six o'clock on weekdays and then after five o'clock on the weekends to do things which typically just meant me making dinner um or going to get ice cream with my boyfriend or something like that but if you are interested in being in a frat um, or in a sorority, if you're interested in Greek life, there are definitely, um, aero kids and aerospace engineering students who are a part of that. If you're interested in being on a D1 sports team or an intramural sports team, you can definitely do that. Just note that you probably are not going to have time for a 25 hour a week job. You might not have time for that extra club. Um, and at some point your grades are probably going to give. I have friends who have four O's, literally do not get below like a 95 on anything. But those are typically also the kids that don't really do much else. Um, and there are definitely kids that have four O's and that have great jobs. And that's awesome and props to them. I could not do that. Um, but then there are also the kids that have four O's and do not have a single job and are not in a single club and are not in a single sport because literally every second of their waking day they're studying, which... Again, it's fine, just figure out where your priorities are. So if you want like a really busy, big social life, go for it, just keep in mind that something else is gonna have to give because there's only so many hours in the day. Oh, this is stressing me out, man. I'm like already getting nervous for classes again. Ugh. Um, oh man, I definitely feel like I wish there was more I could do. But I also know there are not enough hours in the day and I wish I had more time to work out and go to the gym more frequently or do yoga more, go hiking more, do things for myself more. But I I know where my priorities are and it's hard to sometimes waver from that because your priorities are always going to be changing. But just I would highly recommend before your class to start. Um, and then throughout the beginning weeks of your classes, take some time to figure out where your priorities are. Straight A's is not going to be realistic every single semester if you are wanting to work two jobs, be in lots of clubs, be volunteering, and be on a sports team. It's just not going to happen eight semesters in a row with the nature of these classes. Um, and if getting a 4.0 is really important to you, figure out what else is and what's not and what can give in your schedule because that will really help set you up for success. 
um, and grades are and everything more than anything I'd say make sure you're doing things that actually make you excited doing things that you're actually passionate about um, and putting your time and effort into things that are going to be bringing you joy and things that are stress-free this major is already stressful enough you will guaranteed cry probably at least over one exam a year maybe a semester or once a month I probably cry over an exam at least once a month just because stuff happens life happens um so make sure on top of all your sucky really hard classes that you're actually doing things that make you smile because it's hard to find those things every once in a while so I'm rambling this video is incredibly long and I appreciate y'all hanging out with me and I will see you all next time let me know if you have any other questions or if you want me to do another one of these videos or if you have any other videos you'd like to see from me I will see you all next time peace out bye